As a child, I was always prone to sickness. Sickness and injuries. My body was really weak and I always hurt myself playing outside or I fell ill and had to be taken to the hospital. I used to cry because I was constantly in pain. My parents came up to me and asked me why I was crying. I would tell them I'm crying because it hurts. And then my parents would say, what's crying going to do? It won't take the pain away. There's no reason to cry. You have to be strong. Some people might say that parents really shouldn't be saying this to a child. Some people might argue that my parents' words would have a negative effect on me as I grew up. And I get it. I even once argued with them about the words they chose to comfort me. But that wasn't the case. You see, my parents raised me to be logical. They raised me to not waste resources or time on things that wouldn't benefit me. They taught me to be clever and to handle life properly or how they thought it should be handled. And I'm proud of the person I am today because of them. As a child, I always try to be logical. I try to make sense of everything around me. This had its perks and of course its downsides. In school, I studied a lot because it would help me in my future, instead of playing outside on the playground with the other kids. I was also a very sceptical kid. I questioned everything people said, and so when our teacher taught us about Santa Claus... Mama? Yes, dear? Santa Claus... He's f right? I knew it. I need to stress this point. I was logical. I always tried to make sense of the world. I always tried to see the world for what it really was. But there were just some things that I couldn't do that with. As a child, no. To this day, I get scared very easily. I don't get scared of real things like murderers or spiders. I'm terrified of the unknown, of things that aren't logical, things that don't exist. Ghosts, demons, mythical creatures, you name it. The first dream I ever remember was a nightmare where Voldemort from Harry Potter was in my room, walking towards me with witch hats flying across the room. For some reason, I've always been scared of things that I shouldn't be scared of. Despite the way my parents raised me, despite always trying to make sense of things and reaching logical explanations, I just couldn't do it with my fear. I knew they weren't real. I knew they couldn't hurt me. I knew I shouldn't be afraid of the dark, but I was. I always have been. So when the following events started happening to me, I think you can probably guess how scared I was. Or should I say, just how scared I am. The following stories are all real experiences that happened to me. I'm just here to tell my story. I'm not here to tell you what these things really are, nor am I here to convince you to believe in anything because even I don't know what to believe in. You're free to interpret these stories however you wish. With that out of the way, let's begin. When I was 14 years old, I was introduced to a girl, let's call her Lisa. We bonded over practically everything and became very close friends. One day, Lisa came to school and she seemed off, agitated, stressed. I asked her what was wrong, but she refused to tell me. This was weird to me because we usually told each other everything. I kept on pestering her about it until she finally broke and began to open up about her problems. And it wasn't what I was expecting in the slightest. Lisa is a dear friend of mine to this day, and to protect herself and her ideals, I won't tell you guys the things she talked to me about that day. 
but I will say it revolved around the occult. It revolved around supernatural occurrences, and dark, dark things I've never heard about. As I said earlier, I've always been a logical person, and so even when I listen to Lisa speak about these things, I try to make sense of it all. Maybe it was a nightmare? Maybe it was just your cat. Lisa, maybe you should get your mental health checked out. Whenever I try to make sense of her stories, Lisa would tremble and say it was all real. It was too real for her. I could see the fear in her eyes and it frightened me. As we began to go down the rabbit hole of the occult, discussing all things dark and mysterious, the topic of lucid dreaming popped up. I think some of you watching this video now probably know where this story is headed. Lucid dreaming is basically where you can control your dreams. You know you're sleeping, and despite this you stay asleep and start to dream about whatever you like. When I heard about this, I lit up. That sounds freaking amazing. I could fly, I could play with magic, I could make Pokemon real. I swore that when I got home I would research how to do it and I would try it out that night. But when I told Lisa this... Lisa told me she couldn't tell me why, but she asked me not to attempt lucid dreaming, no matter what. I didn't listen to her. I should have listened to her. That night, I went home and learned how to lucid dream. Dark room, little sound, lay on your back, try to keep your mind awake, I followed all the steps and tried to lucid dream. I was like a bug, willingly flying into a spider's nest without even knowing it. I, I didn't think it would work, I'm not sure what I was expecting honestly. But something did happen. My brother was in the room next to mine, and he was playing a video game with some friends. As I lay there trying to lucid dream, I could hear him speaking to his friends about the game. As I lay there, hoping I could control my dream, I started to hear a noise. The noise... It's hard to describe what it sounds like, but I guess I would describe it as... A drum. A bass-like sound. Flowing throughout my body. I began to feel limp and I couldn't move. All of a sudden, I started to see images. Pictures flashing through my mind. There was a castle and a princess. I saw my sister in a garden, among other countless images. They just kept racing through my mind, images I can't seem to recall now. The images sped up and the noise grew louder and louder, until suddenly... I woke up from my dream and I ran to my brother. He was still playing the game talking to his friends. I was confused. Because the whole time I was dreaming, having that experience, I could hear him. The entire time, I heard him in the room next door. Was I dreaming? No, that can't be right. I, I heard him talking. Was I awake then? No, no way. The images and sounds were so vivid, and I couldn't move. Then... What the hell did I just experience? I refrained from telling Lisa what happened. I didn't want to worry her since I'm the one who didn't listen to her advice. And nothing bad happened, so there was no need. I didn't exactly lucid dream, and nothing bad had really happened, so why bring it up? I would just try it again tomorrow. The next night, I didn't get a chance to try lucid dreaming. A few weeks ago, my parents had bought me a digital tablet, so I usually spent school nights drawing until the late hours of the night. Those few weeks, I hardly received any sleep. I was always drawing and practicing in my spare time, 
and I also had school and I worked every weekday after school until 11pm helping my father out in the shop. I was always tired but I loved my tablet so I always stayed up drawing. I don't... I don't know what happened that night. I still can't wrap my head around it. I was hallucinating. It was just my computer messing up. It wasn't anything significant, but, well, I started to see and hear things. I knew they weren't real, but it was 3 a.m. I was in a dark room alone, and I was only 14. It doesn't matter if it meant nothing. I was scared, really scared. I switched my computer off, ran to my bed, and I tried to sleep. This was the first night I experienced sleep paralysis. For those of you who don't know what sleep paralysis is, you might be better off asking someone else because I don't know much about it. I refuse to research any more into it, but what I can tell you is how it feels. It feels like you're stuck between the unconscious and conscious world. You feel like you're neither asleep nor awake. You can't move no matter how hard you try. You can't open your mouth and let the screams out. But this was different. I've spoken to a lot of people who have dealt with sleep paralysis, and only a few people have said they experienced what happened after. The thumping noise from the previous night started to happen. And something else. Something demonic. The noise overflowed my entire body, especially my head. I felt so much pressure on my head as if something was trying to get in. That's the only way I can explain how it felt. And then, I started to see something. Something... Something evil. It didn't have a form, but it resembled a face. A black face. It grew bigger and bigger and bigger. The noise grew louder and louder and louder. I tried to wake up. I tried to scream, but I couldn't. It just kept growing louder and louder, larger and larger and larger until it completely enveloped my entire being. And then I woke up. I woke up and I screamed for help. I knew a little bit about sleep paralysis before this, so when it happened to me, I was scared but I didn't think it was anything supernatural. But, and I didn't know it then, that was only just the beginning.